Guys, welcome to Vitruvian Health Case Study Number One. We're here with Marcio doing a structural balance assessment. So, structural balance assessment. Remember, you've got your body weight squat, overhead squat, fourth hold, back bend, and clap test. Obviously, there would be strength tests, but we're only going to focus on the first five for the purpose of the case study. So, Marcio, when you're ready, feed up the part for me. You're going to do two reps facing that way, and then two reps facing that way. So, arms straight out in front, and down, turn pace, and up. So, full range, all the way down, all the way up. So what I'm looking for, I'm looking to see if Marcio can actually get literally hamstring to touch his calves. I'm noticing what's his upper body position looking like. Is he rounding out, is he collapsing forward? How far forward is he pushing his knees? Are his knees collapsing in? Are they pushing out? Seems like he's got some forward range here. He could obviously go a little bit deeper. So what I'm going to ask him to do is actually go up on your tippy toes and then try to squat down, arms out, go as deep as you can. Fantastic. Now I can see you can achieve that range of movement, torso maintain the same angle, feet on the floor, and he's able to get that full depth. So I'm probably thinking there's some restriction through the ankle there. Facing this way again, but let's check in. Grab onto this dowel, please. Arms straight up over your head. Place the dowel on your head for me for a moment, on your head. Now I can notice that his arms are at 90 degrees. He could bring his um, left hand just a little bit more for me. Bring your hands a little bit closer and then press straight up over your head. Again, he's got the same stance, he's pressing his arms straight up, not pulling back, pressing straight up, and now squat straight down for him. Now, if we look at it, he's probably fighting, falling forward a little bit more. So we're thinking, okay, there's probably some tightness through his lats that's causing him to fold forward. So, okay, from his posterior chain, back, glutes, hemis, um, calves, the whole connect chain, is probably a little restricted, facing forward. Now, if you notice that, again, we could get him to do the elevation, so I'm gonna get straight into that. Marcio, lift your heels up for me. Heels are elevated, he's gonna squat straight down. Again, we're checking in, can he still achieve that range of movement? Yes, he is still falling forward, but the big could be because he's maybe he's too much balance. So I'm gonna get two weight plates, him to put his heels on, and then arms up, straight down, straight up. And again, range is improved. So I'm know in this program we're going to be working on his cars, and I'm going to be working on strengthening those lats. Relax. Then we get rid of the stick, so facing that way. Feet together and fall forward, touch the floor for me. Go all the way down, just touch the floor. Okay, so back up. And I'm going to do this two more times. And we're going to see, does, how does he move? So you touch the floor, notice that the hips move back, and then it comes back up, hips go forward. Beautiful. And now, I want you to place your hands on your hips, and back bend. Because he's already cleared it, I need to keep assessing it to make it wrong. Come back up. So we notice that he's not really moving from his thoracic here, so you want to move back from here, but he's tending to push his hips in, so he's going to be loading his lumbar or rectus a little bit more, especially for deadlifting purposes, and relax. So we can see he can move, he can hinge his hips, however he's having a bit of trouble getting that thoracic extension. So in Marcio's program, I'm going to be working on calves, I'm going to be working on lats, and I'm going to be working incorporating some back bend mobility there. Um, that could be incorporating also the big three to strengthen this, so in about two weeks' time, I'm going to check back in, he's going to obviously be able to get the shoulders back and get the back bend from the thoracic extension. Great job. Now Marcia, I want you to go standing here for me, facing the camera. Okay, so the clap test, the last piece. Now we would take the shoes off, but for the purpose of this test and this case study, we're going to keep the shoes on and then the next case study, compare. So hands are going to go together, arms push straight out in front, lift your right leg up at 30 degrees. So hold. Good. Now can you see how he's just crunched down on this side? So there's a lack of strength on the uh, obliques on this side already, having a bit of trouble balancing. But let's see if we can push it a little further. We wouldn't normally, but let's just set the case of this study. Hop forward just once towards the camera. Whoa. See how he's collapsed in on that side? Again, QL oblique. We already saw it when he balanced, but then when we hopped him forward, we just exacerbated it. We're going to do the other side now, so hands together. Good, lifting that lift. Okay, notice it's much wiggle, so he's got a lot more stability. Hop forward. Okay, so we saw that he hopped forward and laterally. So we're looking at adductors and hamstring on the right side, a little bit of side bend for QL and obliques, and then on the other side being the right, we're looking at just the QLs and obliques. So again, to recap, we got calves, we got posterior chains with the lats, um, we've got some QL development, so side obliques, and then hamstrings and adductors. So keep checking in with this, see if you notice anything different that I might have missed, and enjoy.
Gab, however, has come in with a sore shoulder from arms. What's happened is the uh, muscles in the back kind of gave way and she lost control and she's in quite a bit of pain in elevating her arm over her shoulder. Correct? Yeah. Or, her arm over her head. So literally she came in and she's like, oh, can't even lift it literally above 45 degrees. So we're not going to be assessing, obviously, her overhead squat. However, we can still look at the squat, the back bend, and the forward fold. And what we might notice is, is when she back bends, there's probably a lack of thoracic extension there. And that's probably what caused her to be unstable on that shoulder in the first place. But let's check out, because if, uh, if we're guessing, we're not really assessing. So that's what we're here for. So the first exercise obviously we always go through is the bodyweight squat. So Gavin and Reed, face it that way, feet foot apart, arms out in front, down to the okay on the shoulder. Again, if it's not, I would probably then go hands just like so. Nice comfortable recovery position. Yeah, and then we're just gonna squat straight down and straight up. Yeah, that was beautiful. Face the camera for you, please. So we're sitting that depth. All I'm going to look at with Gab is I'm actually going to try to teach her a little more of the squat. So Gab, organize the abs a little tighter. I just want you to break through the knees. So I feel like you're spreading the floor. And then straight down, straight down, straight down. So here we're looking at more of a technique cue. So what's happening is Gab's pushing her hips back and knees forward, but she's not actually sinking into the squat. So what we want to think about is push the feet down and spread the earth. So feel like you're pushing the floor away from you. Push the knees out of the wider. Be much better and up. Good face that way, try it again, so spread the earth. So just notice the difference between her bum shooting out and actually now that she's sinking straight down. Okay, so if her goal was to develop her glutes more, then yes, what she was doing was fine. But now I'm going to be incorporating the quads, the glute mid, glute max. So squats really well. However, the technique for probably what we're looking for wasn't right. So just use that moment to be corrected. And now we can see that. So that's something that she's going to have to probably practice a little more for her training. If we notice, relax your arms. If you notice that. That's one of the challenges. You could do 10,000 reps of the exact same thing, bashing your head against the wall, and in six months you'll get it. Or, in her program, we're gonna look at heel elevated quad squats, uh, glute bridges, um, higher heel quad squats, um, uh, split squats, lunges. We're gonna look at a variety of leg exercises because 300 reps of a variation is enough to create change. And that's more ideal, especially for someone in Gab setting being a doctor, um, she probably doesn't have all that much time. So that's something to be mindful of. So 300 reps, that's gonna be about the length of a four week program. And then we'll have to see results. Um, awesome. So the next thing is I want you to face that way. I'm gonna go for a forward fold. So touching the toes. And then place the hands flat on the floor if you can and come back up. Two more times from the gap. Again, we're seeing that hip hinging back and going forward. Beautiful. One thing to notice though, go again, Gab. I'm just going that a little bit further. I'm noticing that she's not able to relax her head. She would, can you relax your head all the way down? She can. So if she is quite tense, there might be some tension up here in her neck. Now obviously we know that she has a strain her shoulder, so there could be some the body's holding on a little bit there. Okay? And back. Great stuff. Hands on your hips, back bend, and we want to see if she can back bend too. Okay, so she's got the ability to back bend. She's not really pushing too far, so she is using a little lumbar erector, but a lot of that is coming from the thoracic where I step on the time for me. So she's going all the way back and up. However, if we go one more time, watch the neck here. We're going to go flop. So what happens is we can see there's a lack of control in that extension from the neck and the scalenes. So we notice we're probably going to be doing some push to head back, some neck extension based exercises, strength in the neck, um, a few left to right isometric holds. And also, if we do back bends, doing it with a little more grace, a little slower, a little more control, going to the point just before she flops and then coming back up. Okay, so we've seen we've got some squat correction technique, we've got a little more trap um, release work, and we've got a little more eccentric back bending control. So we're thinking we need to strengthen that posterior chain more so in her program. Great stuff. Yeah, so the next thing facing the camera, we're going to go into the flat test. So again, she can't quite bring those arms out. That's okay, we will bring the hands in, elbows in line, lifting her right leg, again, she's happy to do that, which, again, we've cleared with the client. We lift the right leg, you see she's a little bit wobbly already, but let's have a look, hop forward, once. Okay, so you see how that foot's shifting, we're seeing there's some challenge, lack of strength in the external rotators, and then it is shifting over, so that's telling us a bit of hip instability, so glute mean, and adductors, change legs back. So hold, a little stable and hop. 
Good, so we saw it on both sides. The foot shifted a little bit, a little more lateral shifting on that side. So we're thinking in this program of relax, we're gonna be looking at split squats, strengthening the adductors. Maybe we might do some isometric holds here so she can work on lengthening that neck. <clears throat> holding a weight because she doesn't want to hold a bar on her back for discomfort. So we can hold a weight isometrically here with dumbbells. We're then going to be looking at some oblique work, maybe on the 45 degree back extension. Because she's at an angle, she's going to have to train to keep that neck aligned because that neck was a bit of a challenge at the back bend. <clears throat> Then we're also, of course, we're going to add legs into the program because that's kind of what we want to train for, right? Yeah, yeah of every course. Day. Leg day, every day. So obviously, training different variations of the squat, maybe a close stance, mid stance, and a wide stance, hitting that 300 reps within that four-week period. Now, that's the case study that we've got with Gabriella today. Hope you enjoy. Welcome to the Tribune Health Case Study 3 of the Structure Balance Assessment. We're here with Kate May today. Um, also known as Catherine. So Kate is obviously a lawyer. Um, we're looking at her structural balance assessment. Now one thing that's kind of kind of freeze frame just for a second, like we're trying to, if we be stereotypical here, like she's a lawyer, oh she works at a desk, she works 70 hours a day, she is so totally stressed. <laughs> You want to talk to the individual um, for that, okay? Yes, obviously, she's a lawyer, she's going to be stressed, she's going to be sitting there. Okay, we are probably going to preempt that she's going to be slightly more forward in the shoulders, but again, this is why we did the structure balance assessment to get an understanding of the individual. Is what they're telling us matching what their body tells you, okay? If their body is showing you a lot of breakdown and fatigue and they're feeling okay, there's some red flags being played, and we need to obviously preempt that and inform them of what's going on and then explain to them the process of their program. Because a lot of of times, and if we've got a go-go attitude always on fire, she's going to probably want to lift heavy and want to push herself extremely hard. So we're here to inform them that, hey, look, based off the information we found today, I highly recommend that we look at the accumulation phase, increasing the volume, um, and really just give them the detail and information for that. So Kate, okay, when you're ready, facing that way, we're going to feet hip apart and let's squat. So let's get started with the structure balance assessment. Now that you've got that little bit of information to help you kind of really break the crux of this down. So feet hip apart, arms straight out in front of us, no injuries, we're all clean and squat. Okay, two more times. Now we can see there's a lot of forward leaning progression. Similar to the case study two with Gab, we actually want to think when we can, a squatting, we want to spread the earth. So facing the camera from the cave. What we're going to look at is, okay, when you squat, I want you to feel your feet spreading the earth, really opening up the earth. Boom. Notice there's a slight change there, but we're still getting that forward lean progression. So, what I'm going to try to do is, Kate, can you lift your heels up for me as you squat down? So, trying to balance. Again, this is if we hadn't had any apparatus or tools with us. Again, we see a dramatic change in her squat already. Great. Relax there, facing me, and grab onto this dowel. Bring the dowel in line with your head for me for a sec. We want to make sure the arms are at 90 degrees, spot on, arms straight up, and then let's do an overhead squat, straight down, straight up. <coughs> So again, that forward lean is giving us a representation of this lats type. You can see that she's crunching in the back and then she's letting it go. So we're going to elevate her heels with weight plates. And we're going to see if by pressing those arms up, this helps that squat. Okay, we still notice there's some forward progression there. So it has helped, but there is some, some forward progression. Letting go of that, please. So what we're going to be looking at is passive hangs in our program to open up those shoulders, really stretching out through those lats, um, and then obviously probably working on the ankle, uh, the dorsiflexion of her foot. Maybe we ask, do you sit a lot um, at your desk a lot? Okay, great. So she sits at the desk a lot. Well, we had that idea, but we've now confirmed it. So obviously if she's sitting a lot, she might be in this full dorsiflex state, really working the calves 24-7. So we're going to really want to do some, maybe some down dogs, or even seated calf or standing calf routines to strengthen them and return that range of movement. Remember, a tight muscle is a weak muscle. So again, stretching it doesn't just help. Now, we're going to remove the blocks. Now, Kate, okay, feet together for me, please. And I want you to fold forward as your hands are flat on the floor. And back up. Okay. So again, we see that there's some limitation in her hip, to like her moving back of her hips. She kind of goes back and then it just kind of goes back in. So, hmm, interesting. Noting this down. Hold, hands on hips please. And then back bend. Notice how she literally goes back bend, 
Okay. She bends, at least we get stuck here, and then she continues by using her lumbar erectors. So what we want to do in this program is obviously really focus on this extension of the thoracic, the upper back and back in. Look at what her shoulders do. Notice how they're forward and then they pull back and down. How's it feel in your back? She feels a lot more. Interesting. So obviously for Kate, we're going to probably be looking at 100 to 200 reps in this every single day to really try to return that thoracic extension and alleviate any of that lumbar pressure. Do you get discomfort in your lower back? Oh, another interesting fact. So she gets, sits at the desk, gets discomfort in the lower back. Do you get pain in your shoulders? Yes. Oh. So notice how the assessment now ties everything in together. It's confirming a lot of what we're seeing. Face in the face and forward. Now obviously in the pre-exercise questionnaire we go through details and we explain do you have any pain, do you obviously have any of this, and Kate would have answered all this. But now this test allows us to put, so again, just to double check, you feel obviously some discomfort in your shoulders. Are you aware that having a limitation of thoracic extension actually leads to a dysfunction in your shoulder mobility? I am now. Oh, fantastic, she remember. So feet together for me, we'll now move on to the kite test. Lift your right leg up, interlace the hands together, face and forward, and hop forward for me please. Okay, so landed pretty well, but what you would have noticed is that she's actually shifted slightly. I normally wouldn't see this from behind because we always look at the front, but just a bit of collapsing of the knees. Step back again. We're going to do the other leg, please. So we lift, we hold, she's balanced, she looks good, she hops forward once, she lands, she cheated that one by doing a little baby hop. But that's okay. We're actually going to take a step back and take a bigger hop. Or we would get a step and we elevate. There's no steps, so we take a big hop. Good, so we now see this hip instability, QL oblique flaring up. Huh. Okay, so we based off what we found, we obviously QL obliques, we've got a bit of instability in the hips, so glute me, um, some, oh, some glute max going on there, that's why she's using her lower back a little more. So let's quickly just check that. Okay, could you lie just a little bit, please? <clears throat> so when it comes to glute testing, obviously we want to bend the right knee. We're going to dorsiflex the foot, and then we're going to try to lift the knee up, okay? And that's going to get her to engage her glute. Do you feel that contraction? Yeah. Good, and back down. So that's how you get someone to obviously feel that, you get them to do 10 to 20 reps. But to test it, index fingers, middle finger, on the lower back erector and on the hamstring, thumbs on the glute. Just to double check, are you okay with my thumb being on your glute, Kate? Yes. Fantastic. I want you to keep this leg straight and just lift your right leg up. Cool. So what I feel is when that leg lifts, I feel that she feels her hamstring is lifting and her upper back is contracting, but her glutes aren't firing. So it's dysfunction in glutes. It should be glute, hamstring, back, not back, hammy, no glute. So you'll check the other side, confirm, lift your left leg, and what do you know? back, hammy, no glutes. So for Kate, obviously we're now going to incorporate some pre-activation exercises, bending the knee, lift the leg 20 times, up, squeeze, back down, up, squeeze, back down, really getting that activation of the glutes. We're going to incorporate some thoracic extension before she would initiate with that program. Enjoy.